Today's presentation is on fad diets and basically are they helping or harming us? Um, before I go into talking about the different diets, the popular diets that are out there, I briefly want to talk about the rate of obesity in the United States. You probably have heard on the news that it's been going up year after year after year. Here's a chart where it shows you that basically in 1976, we had about a 47% um, rate of overweight and obesity. And you look at the year 2000 and it, um, it's basically 64% of overweight. So it's increasing. And the reason why we're so alarmed by this, by this increasing, is um, individuals that are obese have an increased risk of, if you can see on the TVs, of cancer, high blood pressure, um, acid reflux, heart disease, diabetes, sleep apnea, and many more things. Before I continue, I want to play a brief animation that's going to talk about how, sorry, how the rate has increased basically over the years. Obesity is a risk factor for several chronic diseases, including heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and cancer. Body Mass Index, BMI, is used as a screening tool to identify possible weight problems for adults. It is a measure of an adult's weight in relation to his or her height, specifically the adult's weight in kilograms, divided by the square of his or her height in meters. Using BMI, obesity is defined as a body mass index greater than or equal to 30. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention began collecting data on obesity rates by state in 1985 through the Behavioral Risk and Factor Surveillance System, BRFSS. According to the BRFSS, the prevalence of obesity in the United States has increased at an alarming rate over the past 20 years. In the beginning of the survey in 1985, very few states had data to report. Of those states, a few had obesity rates between 10 and 14 percent. As collection continued, data became available from more states, providing a more complete picture and showing a general predominance in the 10 to 14 percent range. By 1994, obesity rates had risen to 15 to 19 percent in at least 16 states. By 1997, three states had reported obesity rates greater than 20 percent. This was a trend that continued over the next few years, with more and more states reporting figures in the 20 to 24 percent range. By 2001, a new category had to be developed that reflected the obesity rate of 25 to 29 percent, which had been reported by one state, while the majority of states now reported rates of obesity in the 20 to 24 percent range. The trend toward increased rates of obesity among U.S. adults has shown little sign of improvement. This trend is illustrated by the need to create a sixth category reflecting obesity rates of 30 to 34 percent. By 2005, three states reported that obesity rates had risen to over 30 percent, with a further 15 states reporting in the 25 to 29 percent range. The dramatic increase in obesity across the United States from 1991 to 2005 must be reversed to improve the health of Americans and reduce the risk of chronic diseases associated with overweight. Now you saw in that video that it ends in 2005. I'm going to show you a slide. Let's look at 2011, just two years from now. Look at the 30 plus percent category. Look at that. All the southern states. So it's increased even since 2005 even more. So it's alarming. Now Based on that, it's not a surprise why so many people resort to all these commercial weight loss programs that we have out there. Um, before somebody decides to participate in a program, there's many things that they should look at. A lot of these programs offer a quick fix. Basically, there's no magic bullet out there. You'll see a lot of programs that a lot of celebrities are um, endorsing, but basically it's just a quick fix, and then what happens at the end? You get into this yo-yo dieting. Basically, you lose the weight, then you gain it again, and then you go back on a program. Um, over 50 million Americans each year are basically participating in these weight loss programs. And only about 5% keep their weight loss in the long term. Only 5%. 
Have any of you in here ever or known somebody that has in, engaged or participated in any of these weight loss programs? You probably know someone. Yeah, many people. Um, again, before participating in a weight loss program, you must also be aware that um, there's a cost to most of these programs. Sometimes you also have to buy products from the program, or there might be an ongoing month monthly cost, and we'll go over each program in detail. Now, it'll take us all day to go over every single program that's out there, so we're briefly just going to go over some of them. And a lot of them have fraudulent claims. They offer quick weight loss. And yes, you will lose the weight at the beginning, but most of the time it's because they're restricting your caloric intake. Um, another thing to take into consideration before investing in one of these programs is on average, um, do clients regain the weight uh, in the long term? Is there any maintenance or follow-up? Is the rate of weight loss, um, what is the rate of weight loss in the program? And um, does the program emphasize a well-balanced diet? You'll see a lot of these programs which we're going to go into detail, will restrict certain nutrients. Like they'll basically mention that you shouldn't be consuming that much uh, carbohydrates or that much fat. Um, the programs we're going to go over today are basically Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, the South Beach Diet, Slim Fast, E-Diet, Atkins, the Zone Diet, and the Ornish Spectrum. So we're going to go in detail into each one of these. Basically, we'll first start off with Weight Watchers. We actually have a Weight Watchers program here on campus that you can participate in. The Weight Watchers program consists of four principles. It's based on a scientific approach. This out of all of them seems to be the one that you get the most results out of. Their four principles are food, exercise, behavior, and a supportive atmosphere. So basically, when we're talking about food, what they do with their system is basically they have a point plus value system. They assign points to foods based on how um, healthy they are, basically. They look at basically a couple of things. They look at protein, they look at fiber, and they look at the carbohydrate content. If you have a food that's higher in fiber, it's going to have less points. So the healthier foods will have less points. The ones that are unhealthy will have more points. And then you're assigned a certain amount of points based on your target weight. When you go in, they weigh you in, and they basically determine what your ideal weight will be. And then they assign how many points you should be consuming based on what, how you're going to reach your target weight. So, for example, broccoli could probably be little to no points, maybe one point or 0.5 points, versus a slice of pizza can be about 10 points. And if you're only allowed 30 points for the day, you can basically eat only three. If you eat three slices of pizza, you're done for the day. That's basically how their program works. The good thing about this program and why it's very... Um, most people get the results that they want out of it is basically there's a Weight Watchers leader. You have somebody that you meet with once a week and they basically go over certain things, the struggles that you've had through the week, and it's in a group setting so other people get to talk about it. And you get to discuss what things could be done for the following week and you weigh in every week. That's done privately, it's not done in front of everybody. If you want to, most people when they're excited, they lose some weight, they announce it and they announce it to the whole group. Um, there is a cost to this program. The cost is usually $39 for four weeks. It includes weekly support group meetings. However, um, there's also an online version, but research has shown that if you're not attending the support groups, you're not going to lose as much weight. So the people who attend the support groups lose three times as much weight as those who try to do it, do it up themselves online. Um, there's also meetings here. Um, there's work at work Weight Watchers, where it tends to be about $120, $130 for 12 weeks. So the drawback with this program would be the cost of the program, basically. Then there's Jenny Craig. Most of you have probably heard of Jenny Craig. It tends to be endorsed by many celebrities. Um, participants are basically partnered with a consultant, and they meet weekly. Um, you can choose in-home delivery food to the house or in-center program. And there's three different programs depending on your personal needs. The first one, the Jenny Set Go, they basically set you up on a 12-week program to get you started, to get you to lose some weight really quick. Um, the Premium Success is a 12-month program. So basically, you're on that for about 12 months. And then there's the Metabolic Max. In this one, they give you an armband. It's pretty cool. They give you a little armband. 
that tracks how many calories you're burning throughout the day. They give, also give you access to an online program where you input your information and you can know how many calories you're consuming. Now this program can be pretty costly. It's about $15 for four weeks plus the cost of the Jenny Craig food. So you have to purchase the actual food from them because mm -hmm. they're determining yeah. your portions, how much yes, you're eating. Please. It could be anywhere from 85 Definitely. to 100 per week. And then we have Nutrisystem. You've seen this a while back advertised by Dan Marino, former quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. Um, it's based on portion control and the glycemic index. Glycemic index basically has to deal with the spike in your blood glucose level. Um, it consists of delivery of food to your house, so that means the foods are prepackaged. So what's the problem when we have prepackaged foods? What do we need to have in them in order to preserve them? They're higher in sodium, so that's one drawback from this program. Um, there's different programs for males, females, and diabetics. So they determine that based on the needs for a, free, a male and a female. And if you're diabetic, obviously because, because of the blood glucose level. Um, there's an online portion of it. It's for support. And then there's also a weight loss tracker. Uh, the cost of this program is anywhere from $230 per month to $335, $85 per month. So it can get pretty costly. And then you also had the South Beach Diet. Um, this was developed by a cardiologist uh, but from the University of Miami. It was originally developed for cardiac patients and diabetic patients to improve their blood chemistry level um, and in order for them to lose weight. However, he found that it was pretty successful, so then they started marketing it to the general public. There's three different phases. Phase one, in this, they did the research, they determined that most of us crave carbohydrates. So phase one, you eliminate all carbohydrates. For 14 days, no carbohydrates are consumed. So basically, obviously, by doing that, you're going to lose weight in those first 14 days because you're going to lose water weight. Then you start to reintroduce some of the carbohydrates, but then there's still some that are, that are limited. You get to consume specific carbohydrates, and then phase three would be the maintenance phase. Um, they also provide an online support. And they have something called now the Supercharge Fitness Program, where they're including fitness. All of these programs have determined that you also need the physical activity component, because just with the diet component, some people can't get the results that they need. The cost of this program, if you go with the online program, is $4 per week. And now I'm going to pass the floor over to my colleague, Elida Medero, who will be talking about some other programs. Good afternoon, everyone. Before I continue on with all of the different types of diets, I wanted to uh, talk to you about how these diets come along. So when you look at them, you look at a cardiologist came up with it, a doctor came up with it, uh, they are um, medical scientists, they are this and that. But when you are dealing with food and nutrition, and you talk about a doctor, most doctors, they will have one, two classes of nutrition. And then they go into their specific areas. If you're going to be a teacher for English, you're going to take a lot of English and a little bit of math, and so on and so on. So why is it that these doctors are the ones that come up with these diets as opposed to a registered dietitian? So that, when I was doing research about this, I'm thinking, why are doctors doing this when this should be done by a registered dietitian? These are the nutritionist specialists. So why is this happening? So basically, I think that the reason is because a nutritionist, a registered dietitian, would not come up with a diet saying that you're supposed to consume 30% of this or 20% of that, that you have to eat these specific meals Okay, because basically that is not life. That is not nutrition. Nutrition is about variety. Nutrition is about eating all kinds of different foods. Okay, and remember that the diet industry makes about more than a billion dollars every single year from us that are getting into all kinds of different diets. So all of these diets, we're talking about them, but we're not advocating that you get into any of these diets. I mean, all you have to do is go to Publix and buy a little bit from every single aisle, 
and try to avoid, avoid the middle lines, which is where you have all the crackers and the cookies and all the sugar, okay, and eat from the outside and go away from the bakery and spend a little bit more time in the produce, and there you have it, okay? You don't have to spend a penny on buying a book that you read, goes into the shelf, you use it for a little while so that you can go to somebody's wedding, and then after that, it's over, okay? Because diets don't work. We get sick and tired of the shakes. We get sick and tired of the prepared meals. We get sick and tired of all of that. So all of these diets is not like we should follow this. Okay, so you got this limb fast. They have the three, two, one. Okay, so three snacks, two shakes, and one meal under 500 calories. Now, when you hear 500, maybe if you're saying $500, sounds like a lot. 500 calories is a cheeseburger's fries and a Coke. We're talking about a, um, one of the Happy Meals. You know the Happy Meals for the kids? That is 500 calories. Probably goes over that. Okay, so you're supposed to have 500 calories in the evening, and during the day, you're eating these little tiny snacks and drinking these shakes. That makes absolutely no sense, but every time that you buy these things, somebody is making money. So this is one of the ones that definitely, the eat diets, again, now they're going to deliver 28 meals to you. You don't have to worry about cooking anything because they're gonna send it to you. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is pay $166 a week and we're going to give you our prepared meals, okay? Then you go with the Atkins. Everybody knows about Atkins. Okay, at Atkins, the reason why these diets work is because they work on a short term. You get into the Atkins, and yes, you will lose maybe five pounds in a week, which goes against the USRDA, which says that you should lose one to two pounds per week if you're going to maintain. I was reading this morning about, oh, you can lose 15 pounds in a week. How do you get to that? Okay, starving doesn't work, malnutrition doesn't work. All of these different things that they tell you to do is because we're desperate. I want to find the quick fix. I don't want to do what these people tell me in the wellness center that you need to exercise and you need to cut back on calories. That is like too much work. So I'm going to follow these things because next month I have this wedding to go to, or this celebration to go to, and I have to lose these 15 pounds just like that, okay? So it doesn't matter that in October, I don't have 15 pounds over, I have 20 pounds more, okay? Which is usually what happens, and that's why they're called yo-yo diets. Up and down, up and down, up and down. So this is another one, Atkins. They say you eat the fat and the proteins because then you're not gonna be burning the carbohydrates because you're not eating any, okay? But all of that goes against the USRDA, which says you should consume 55 to 65% in carbohydrates, but not the carbohydrates of the cookies and the pies and the white flour and the white rice and the potatoes. No, the carbohydrates of the green vegetables and the high fiber and the sweet potato and everything that is healthy for you. So we get this thing about the carbohydrates all confused, okay? Now, when you're talking about calories, calories are calories, okay? If you're eating 1,000 calories, I don't care where they came from, you ate 1,000 calories. Did you burn? 1,500 calories. Okay, you burned 1,500 calories and you ate 1,000. So now we're going to lose weight, okay? 1,000 calories. You only burned 800 calories. You're going to gain weight regardless. That's just the way it is, okay? Now, when it comes to the carbohydrates again, okay? Your body, you eat the food, Okay, and the body says, okay, I got these carbohydrates here. If I use them today, that apple pie that I ate, if I use it, then tomorrow it's not going to be stored as fat. But if I don't use these carbohydrates, which are the first ones that are burned, but I only burned 800 out of the 1,000 carbohydrates that I ate, that means tomorrow 
I'm going to wear it, okay? I'm going to store it. The same thing is going to happen with the protein. You eat protein, that's wonderful. You used it for the hair, for building your bones, your muscle, for everything that protein is made for. We got leftovers. Where do the leftovers go to? It's called the amino acid pool. Think of it this way. This is where the amino acid pool goes. Think of the receptacle, okay? Very little. But if you happen to eat a big portion, then the little bit that we need, okay, that goes into the amino acid pool is there for anything that the body is going to need for the immune system or whatever else. The leftovers are going to go into the fat storage. When you eat your carbohydrates, we have a reservoir for the carbohydrates. Okay, that's called glycogen in the muscles and in the liver. Okay, this is filled to the top. We got left over. What do we do with that? We send it to the fat storage. And that is why we gain weight. Because we only have a very small storage space for carbohydrates. We have an even smaller storage space for protein amino acid pools, and glycogen. But we have a humongous storage for fat. You see, I could have put the, the entire area. This is all fat. That's why we can weigh 100 pounds or 150 or 800 pounds. The body has lots and lots of space for fat. So if you eat the proper amount of carbohydrates and then you work out, they're not going to be stored as fat. Okay, but that is the key, work out. So that's the problem with these things. So you go to the zone diet and they say, the goal is to reduce cellular inflammation. Now this is another thing. When you go on the internet, you have an average person and that average person reads cellular inflammation. What the heck is that? It must be good because they're saying that that is what it's for. It doesn't make any sense that you're consuming 40% of protein and 30 and 30 of protein and fat. What do you need all of that for? Why do we need so much protein? We only need 0.8 grams of protein for one kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds of body weight. Women need 40, 50 grams of protein, not that much. Men, maybe 60, 70. That's it. We don't need the protein shakes, the protein bars. We're not going to the Olympics, so we don't need that, okay? So again, the cost, $179 a week, okay? Dr. Ornish from California, he came up with the Ornish Spectrum. Now, this one is high in plant-based food, which is good. But the problem is that many of us don't want to be eating a lot of vegetables, so that's a downside. Even though it's good for you, a lot of people don't want to do that. People have more taste, more desire for fat. So this is a good one, and you can just follow it, just, you know, following whatever nutrition book, okay, or looking USRDA online and just following that, okay? But again, you have to pay for all of these different things. What is the good? What is the bad? Well, the good is that many of the programs, okay, they give you the meals and they say, here it is, there you have it. And they tell you, you should exercise, okay? Many of the good things, but the results are short term. What is the bad? That you get sick and tired of the same meals, that you don't want to follow the different shakes, that you don't want to have any more this type of food that they're sending you. We can't deal with that. So what happens is that we lose weight, we gain weight, and they all cost money. So that's something else to think about. Then you have the medically supervised programs. These are weight loss center, and there you have two of the most famous ones, the health management and the OptiFast. And they're very good for people that are obese, but you're paying a lot of money for this as well. Now, they are clinically managed, which is great because you go and they do all kinds of cholesterol checks and everything, but you have to go to this center and they're going to tell you which meals you're going to consume, which comes from them, okay? And on top of that, you have to pay lots and lots of money because the cost is 
pretty high, anywhere from $1,700 to $2,200, okay? So it's good because you have the medical exam, but it's also bad because you have to be paying these people all the time, all right? So again, then you have the nonprofit self-help programs. But the, the problem with the self-help program is if we could do it by ourselves, we wouldn't go anywhere else, right? If I could just say I'm going to get up and go exercise, then I wouldn't need to go and ask anybody else for help, okay? So this requires that you say I'm going to do this and I'm going to abstain from compulsive eating. And you know that if you're sitting in front of the TV watching a movie, what are you going to do? Most of the time we're going to snack. So that's the thing. Some people, when they get depressed, they eat. Okay, some people, when they're very happy and, you know, let's celebrate, we always bring in food. Okay, and usually it is not broccoli and cucumber. Okay, so the claims and truth of fat diet, they tell you, you can lose weight easily. Well, there's all kinds of complicated things. And even with Weight Watchers, you've got to follow all the little numbers or you have to buy their food and you have to do this and that. Okay. Uh, another claim, you can lose weight by eating a specific ratio of carbohydrate, protein, and fat. You lose weight when you eat less food and you exercise more. That's all. Okay, it's all about energy nutrients. High protein diets are popular because they work. If they worked, all of us would be skinny in the United States. And we know that over 60% of the population is overweight. The reason why they say that they work is because it's a quick fix. Okay, oh, I can do this and lose 10 pounds in two weeks. Beautiful, I'll do it. But this is not for a lifetime. It works for a little bit, not for a long term, okay? Thousands of people have been successful with this diet. Every time you see one of those commercials, you never see that Harvard Medical School, okay, is supporting this. Or you never see that a scientific research was done. They come up with uh, oh, many claims on how successful this diet is, and then they put a person before and after. That's usually what happens, okay? High protein diets energize the brain. Did you know that the brain works on glucose? The, wor the brain works on sugar, doesn't work on protein. Okay, so that's out. Carbohydrates raise blood glucose levels. They trigger insulin production and fat storage. What well, all you need to read from there is insulin promotes fat storage when energy intake exceeds energy needs. What does that mean? If you eat more, than what you need, than what you burn, you're gonna gain weight. That is all there is to it. It's all about energy intake, otherwise named food, as opposed to energy output, which is this. Move, 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 in whichever way, okay? Conclusion, all of these diets make you lose weight temporarily. They make you very happy temporarily. Okay, and then you go back from, oh, I'm wearing now my size 14, and then my size 10, but you better keep those clothes there because we're going to go back to the size 14 again. Why? Because we're using the quick fix diet. That's the reason why. So the ideal diet is one that you can say, I can live with this all the rest of my life. I am not just going to follow this for three months. I'm not just going to eat these prepared meals. I am going to have my broccoli today, and tomorrow I'm going to have potatoes, and the next day I'm going to have Doritos. But the Doritos are just going to be one day of the week. It's not going to be every day of the week. So we need to eat. We need nutrition. But we can do a, a lot of the good and a little bit of the bad. You want the ice cream? Have the ice cream. You want to have some ice cream? You have the amount of ice cream that fits in this. Not the amount of ice cream that fits in this. It's called moderation. Okay, moderation. That's all there is to it. Okay, so any questions that you have before we move on 
with our preparations of the smoothies and with the introduction of the meal. So what I have here is, okay, if you want to go ahead and have a healthy breakfast or a healthy snack, okay, this is called a smoothie, which you may have seen from before. This yogurt, okay, you can make three glasses of this smoothie. This is four ounces of yogurt, just plain yogurt, and you got 75 calories there. One tablespoon is 64 calories because honey is all about fructose and glucose. You got your raspberries, 64 calories. All of this is 64 calories. All of this is 49 calories, okay? And what we do is we put that in there, okay? Then we put one glass full of ice as well, okay? We don't need to have all of it being from the yogurt. You put your yogurt in there. And then, of course, since this is plain, which means it doesn't have much sugar other than the ones that comes from the milk, okay? And then you put one tablespoon, I just squirt a little bit of it, of the honey. Then you put it all together, and you make a smoothie. So this could be your breakfast very nutritious you're talking about high vitamin c you're talking about your calcium okay a little bit of iron potassium you're getting a lot of good stuff okay a lot of the antioxidants you have a little bit of sugar you have the good protein of honey which is going to give you thiamine a lot of the b vitamins as opposed to putting sugar Sugar is just glucose and fructose. But when you're dealing with the honey, you're going to get a good bunch of the vitamins, the B vitamins specifically. Okay? So it's, a, it's sugar, but it's a little bit of good things coming along with it, vitamins and, and, nutri and um, minerals. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to you, Daniel. We're going to talk about the food that you're going to have now, which is a healthy Cuban cuisine. So it's a twist on the typical Cuban meals. Okay, so as Professor Madero mentioned, we're going to have a healthy Cuban cu cuisine. So basically a little twist on um, ropa vieja. Has anybody ever had ropa vieja here? It's usually made with beef. But what we did this time around, the chefs here at the Miami Culinary Institute put a little twist on the traditional dish and we made it with turkey. Um, it still has the same sauce, that uh, tomato sauce, but not as much of it. We also made con gris. We made it out of brown rice. It's usually made out of white rice. And I was talking to the chef. They usually use um, the fat from pork to give it some taste. What we did this time around, we put vegetable oil instead. And then we have a fruit salad. And in addition, we have a little surprise for you. We also have some potatoes. The skin wasn't taken off of it. And they cooked it al dente. So basically, it's not cooked all the way. The reason for that is so it doesn't lose all the nutrients. Sometimes when you cook vegetables all the way, all the nutrients leach out into the water and you're using, losing some of the nutrient content. No, please don't do that. Please. Before all of you leave, I want to briefly introduce the chef who prepared this meal for you. Um, her name is Marta. She prepared the tasty meal that you had today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. This program is brought to you by Miami Culinary Institute at Miami Dade College. For more information about the schools and the culinarium program, please visit www.miamidadeculinary.com or call 305 237 3276.